Welcome to the Breadbox, the channel dedicated to Commodore computers. Don't forget to like this video, click the subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you know when the next video about Commodore computers is uploaded on this channel. For most people, the thought of being caught in a severe storm is their worst nightmare. Now imagine if that storm was a superstorm or a perfect storm. That's what the residents in the countries around the North Sea faced on the night of January the 31st, 1953. It was called the worst storm to hit the UK in 500 years, causing massive destruction in the Netherlands, Belgium, Scotland and England. Over 2,500 people were killed in the resulting tidal surge. 1,836 of these were from the Netherlands alone. Tens of thousands were left homeless. 24,000 homes were destroyed, 160,000 acres of farmland was flooded, tens of thousands of livestock were killed, 200 miles of railway lines were destroyed along with 200 major factories also being destroyed. The repair costs reached over £1 billion. What caused this mass destruction was a com combination of high spring tides and a severe windstorm with speeds of 126 miles per hour over the North Sea. Over 230 people also died at sea, as ships in deep waters of the North Sea also sunk. The ferry MV Princess Victoria had 133 fatalities. Within six months, the UK government was sinking huge sums of money into research into these sort of storm surges and how to predict them. Shizu U Ishiguru U, I hope I pronounced that correctly, a Japanese ocean scientist at Nagasaki Marine Observatory four years earlier began researching these sort of storm surges and applying electronics to storm surge prediction. In 1956, Shizu U Ishiguru was invited to continue his studies in Britain at the National Institute of Oceanography in Surrey, where he made a six foot high electronic model of the North Sea. Of course, at this point, it wasn't using a Commodore PET, and it was used for many years, continually improving the North Sea model as technology improved. Then, around about 1977, when computers were still relatively new to the general public, a Commodore PET 8032 computer was integrated into the North Sea Storm Surge model, along with the Commodore 2031, a 5.25 inch disk drive, and also other units as well. So what did this machine look like in full? Let's have a look right now. As you can see from the left hand side top, we have an Epson dot matrix printer. On the left hand side underneath that printer, we have an Advanced Instruments OS240 oscilloscope. On the right hand side course, we have the Commodore 2031 disk drive. Underneath that, we have the Commodore PET 8032. The second half of this machine, on the right hand side, was a V-shaped panel containing circuit boards and capacitors. Electronic waves would flow through the grid to mimic water waves, providing data about how C reacts to different conditions. The capacitors underneath stored the electricity to release it to the grid of circuit boards. If you love technical terms, this machine was an electronic storm surge model as a depth integrated single layer two-dimensional electronic model based on hydrodynamic equations used to examine tidal surges. Whew, that's a mouthful. In more simpler terms, it simulated the North Sea and increased the ability to predict the impact of a storm surge along the UK coastline. And of course, that saves lives. Eventually, the machine was no longer needed. It was replaced and it spent many years in Shizu U's garage until it was eventually donated to the Science Museum where it is now permanently displayed. So go check it out after the lockdown finishes. Isn't it great to see Commodore computers being used for great things? If you'd like to see the newsreel of the 1953 flood in full, I'll play it straight after these credits. Thanks for watching, and until next time, ciao.
worst storm in 500 years whips the North Sea into a boiling cauldron. Flood tides lashed by hurricane winds defy the heroic efforts of thousands of workers to reinforce the dikes and race inland to inundate one-sixth of Holland's land area. Even as these pictures were taken at the height of the storm, the death toll stood at 1,400. And as rescue work progressed, it was feared the grim total might reach the 2,000 mark. The dikes, for centuries, Holland's bulwarks against the sea, crumble in hundreds of places, and the relentless flood of salt water pours over hundreds of thousands of acres of fertile farm land, just reclaimed from the ravages of war. Every available vehicle is pressed into service as the entire nation is mobilized to fight the disaster. While some livestock could be salvaged, the major portion perished in the raging flood waters. This loss alone cannot yet be estimated, but will run into the millions. Houses in the coastal area are torn from their foundations and tossed into grotesque positions. Others are crumbled where they stand. Help from six nations is rushed to stricken Holland and the army and navy are mobilized for rescue work. Women and children first is the order as 30,000 or more are driven from their homes. Some of them in pitiable condition from exposure to the biting northwest winds. So they sit amid the wreckage of a lifetime of work, stunned and mute. Emergency supplies of clothing pour in from six nations for those driven from their homes destitute. Transportation along the coast is completely paralyzed as road beds for miles are entirely washed out. Doughty Holland, whose courageous recovery from a devastating war, suffers a stunning blow from her ancient enemy, the sea ever at her door. The same storm-driven waves smash the Belgian lowlands. The North Sea rushes in irresistibly to engulf land wrested from its depths centuries ago, devastating an area of Belgium inhabited by more than three million. Casualties here have been comparatively low, only 20 reported dead, but the property damage is great, especially in the coastal cities of Antwerp and Ostend. Their harbor facilities totally disrupted, their streets a shambles. Ahead lies a painful reckoning of the storm's cost and an arduous time of reconstruction. Termed the worst natural disaster in 1,600 years of its history, the storm vents its fury on the east coast of England. Particularly hard hit is the region surrounding the famed Thames estuary, lined with seaside resorts. Cottages are shattered like matchwood. A once thriving resort town is reduced to a shambles. Britons place their dead 324, with many still unaccounted for. Among them were 12 American Air Force men and members of their families. Fleeing before the onrushing flood are thousands of refugees. In England, as in Holland, the rich Kentish farmlands suffer untold damage to soil and livestock. The toll in shipping alone will run into millions of dollars as commercial and naval vessels are flung ashore. The entire coast of East Anglia is littered with the hulks. As the storm spends its fury, Britain and the Low Countries take stock. An estimated 2,000 dead, one million homeless, property damage that will take months to assess, a cataclysm that will be recorded in history.